The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and at amazon.com. Dina, you're considering pursuing a guy? Hi, how are you? Good. Um, actually, I'm actually kind of in a relationship right now with him. Okay. Um, he's just very, he's not an emotional person. He basically just, like, I always ask him how he feels and stuff like that, and he just, he doesn't have anything to say. Like, I don't know why he keeps everything bottled up inside. I I try to, like, you know, do things that he wants to do, and it's just, I think I just need to not pursue him anymore. Okay, so it's, so what you're learning is what from that relationship? Um, I'm basically learning that um, I'm just, I think I'm giving too much. I'm giving like maybe 80% and he's only giving 20% and I don't think I should see him anymore. I, I wanted to ask you about it and see what you said, but I don't. I don't think that I should talk to him anymore. Yeah, it sounds like you've already come to the conclusion, but it's such an incredibly fascinating topic. When you're with somebody who's emotionally closed or shut down, um, what you experience is just deadness. You're with them. Well, did you like that movie? What would you like to do today? Uh, tell me, what are your thoughts? You know, they, they were really arguing. Your family was arguing. What are your thoughts about that? Oh, nothing. Is There's like no inner life. There's no person there. You don't get the richness and the dimension of a person whose mind is active. Mm-hmm. And so... I, um, I understand. And did he have vet, did he have any hobbies or does he have any hobbies? I know you're still in the relationship. Anything he um, loves in life? Anything that makes him break through that uh, that repressive curtain? He likes to. He's a carpenter and he likes to do like side jobs and he basically likes you know outdoor sports like swimming and um, snowboarding and stuff like that. He went for winter, but. Other than that, I mean, like, he never really took me, like, snowboarding or anything like that with him. Like, it's basically when he wants to do something, you know, like, he'll call me, like, last minute or something like that. It's never, like, set plans. So you don't see anybody that has a long-range perspective. The reason I'm asking these questions is you're you're in the dating field right now. You want to find a partner, correct? Right. right. And so you want to ta- be able to take away from this experience some pointers of what not to look for and what works. And what I'm hearing is you want somebody who does share their inner life with you. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you don't want them so in, you don't want them insecure, but you want to have a thinking person. You want to have mm-hmm. a person who has personal values too. If they say, I don't care, I'll do whatever, and there's never anything, you feel like it's, like you said, you're 80%, he's 20%, or you're 90 and he's 10, and it doesn't work out. You feel like he's just shadowing your life, but you don't have a partner. You don't have an equal. Right. If right. you feel like you're try- working too hard in a relationship to make it work, that's a big tip off that, uh, that there, something is missing for you. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't plan long range, he's got these side jobs, or he likes swimming and he likes snowboarding, and oh well, mm-hmm. you know, he may invite you, but this you don't get a sense of, oh, I'm passionate about swimming. I would love to take you to uh, this, I don't know, where would you go on a swimming vacation? <laughs> <laughs> to the Caribbean. <laughs> Let's make it funny. Yeah. <laughs> he might not have that money as a carpenter, but uh, why, why not uh, in fantasy go there? And you see, you want someone more vibrant. Um, what are you mm-hmm. thinking of telling him? Um, well, basically, I'm probably going to just be like, you know what, if you ever want to... See, the thing is, I hate to stay friends because I'm not good at being with friends with people after I've dated them. Right, so and that's common. I just kind of want to maybe just cut it off as far as maybe not answering my phone or calling him. Okay, which leaves him completely in the dark. Does he have any heads up? Have you talked about any of this before? Oh, yeah. I've talked about him numerous times. I've just been like, you know, why are you so... I know maybe you've been hurt in the past, and, you know, I'm not that person that hurts you, and I'm just trying to, you know... Coax him out. out ...and trying to, like, get past that, and he just... He doesn't really say much. Like, he's like... It's like he's numb, 
Oh, yes, it's a good way to describe it. The image that came to my mind is if you were in an intensive care unit and listening to a heart monitor, you want to hear it go, you want, or looking at it, you want to see the beeps, the little uh, chart go up and down so you can see the heart beating. You don't right. want a flat line. <laughs> yeah. And you don't want a flat line emotionally with a partner either. Obviously, you don't want a guy who is so hot. I don't mean hot in a sexy sense, but hot in an um, angry sense that you've got too, too much emotion and it's very irrational and splattering all over the place. But you want someone who can breathe emotionally. Right. So uh, one of the things you can do, you're saying if you're looking to break it off, one of the mm-hmm. things you can do is to ask him, you, say, you can say, you know, I'm feeling like it's not working out for both of us. Mm-hmm. That's the first step. I put it on an equal playing field for both of us. Those are the okay. key words. And my guess is that you might, that we might not be a good match because it must be frustrating for you. You know, I'm asking you what's going on. And that's not your style. It looks like you would want a woman who takes you as you are and would enjoy Mm -hmm. that and you know I'm looking for something a little different and and I think there are so many wonderful things about you assuming that's true if they're not you don't say that but something kept you in the relationship for a bit so maybe Mm -hmm. you can name maybe there are not so many wonderful things but you know I I admire your carpentry work I enjoy watching Mm -hmm. you swim and I enjoy seeing the the photos of you uh, snowboarding and, you know, I, we've had some good laughs together, and sometimes it just doesn't work out, and I thought I'd give you a heads up on that. Okay. So that might help. And also, um, I wrote a book with a co-author, Dr. Ed Locke, and we have a whole section on how to find your soulmate. Mm-hmm. And it's got multiple chapters. How do you introspect when you get the feedback like you're getting? You know, what What does this mean that he doesn't talk? Was he abused in the past? Would he open up and become a dynamite partner? Or should I just mm-hmm. uh, give up? We talk about the values, having interests and tastes that are similar, and personality and habits and your attitude towards money. There's so much. So you could go to my website. Uh, it, the book is called The Selfish Path to Romance, but that means self-valuing, self-esteem. So thank you so much okay. for your call. And here's a little more from Dr. Kenner. Hello, Dr. Crane. This is Chet from Whitby Island. I gave you a call last year. I was having problems with low, low self-esteem. Ah, ah, I see. And did my advice help you to become more assertive? Damn straight. You know, people say I'm downright arrogant. Well, you know what I say? Screw them. Well, uh, perhaps you took my advice just a bit too far. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Screw you, too. And that's obviously from Fraser. And have you ever been with somebody who goes from being a wimp? I mean, they, they don't express themselves. You try to draw them out. Oh, really, tell me what you would like to eat today. Tell me, would you like, what movie would you prefer? What do you feel like doing on vacation? Oh, whatever you want, dear. They're a wimp. They can't speak their own mind. They don't let themselves. And then they decide to change. And they come out oh, gangbusters. And they're saying, I'm going to do whatever I damn please. This is the movie we're going to. This is where we're going to eat. And this is the vacation we're going to take. And you go, whoa, 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 what happened here? This is not what I expected. Uh, when you, you want to be able to learn how to communicate well and what it means to own your own life and to speak your own mind. And speaking your own mind obviously doesn't mean being aggressive. And it also doesn't mean uh, just becoming a doormat becoming subservient and letting someone else call all the shots. Obviously, that wouldn't be speaking your own mind. For more Dr. Kenner podcast, go to drkenner.com and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner. One major destroyer of romance, and in fact of all relationships, is the threatening or initiating of physical force. Devin's relationship with Lydia is an example. He would bark orders at her, criticize her relentlessly, and slap her around whenever she talked back. If she tried to call a friend or her parents, he would yank the phone away from her. He did not let her spend money without his permission. She felt sick and trapped and often fantasized about escaping to a safe place 
place. Before the marriage, Devin had seemed like a confident, take-charge guy, but she had not realized until too late what, in quotes, take charge meant to him. He was a control freak. Lydia should not just have fantasized about running away. She should have walked out. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com and you can buy the book at amazon.com.